Nearly nine years ago, Chevrolet really injected some much needed life into the dated and stale midsize pickup truck segment with the then new second generation Chevrolet Colorado. Now in that time frame, this truck has seriously challenged the dominance that was set forth by the Toyota Tacoma and the Nissan Frontier. And for 2023, Chevrolet is looking to reset that bar yet again with the all new third generation Colorado. It's built on an all new frame. It has a new 2.7 liter turbo under the hood and it has an interior that has some of the best tech that you're gonna find in the segment. So today we're actually out here in Julian, California. We're going to drive three different versions of the Colorado out on the road. We're also going to take this trail boss model out on an off-road trail. And at the end of this video, we're going to see has Chevrolet managed to reset the bar yet again? If you guys are looking for a mid-sized truck, stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the styling of this all new Colorado, I wanna pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this truck because this is where Chevy made kind of a controversial change. The prior generation offered three engines, a four cylinder, a V6 and a turbo diesel. All of it is gone, it's been replaced by a single turbocharged four cylinder. It displaces 2.7 liters. We've seen this engine in the Silverado and even the Cadillac CT4. The lead engineer for this vehicle tells us that this truck was basically designed to accommodate this 2.7 from the start. So it's offered in three specific tunes. This particular one here that I'm showing you is the Trail Boss model. It has the Turbo Plus engine, which means it makes 310 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. That's right, nearly 400 pound-feet of torque from a four-cylinder, albeit it's a larger 2.7 liter turbo four-cylinder. There is a base work truck model that offers around 237 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. That model has around 10 PSI of max boost pressure from the turbo. This engine has around 20 PSI. However, Chevy says that if you want to basically do like a flash tune like in the aftermarket, you can't do that reliable because it's got specific hardware changes and a different transmission when you guys go from the base turbo engine up to the turbo plus. If you guys are looking at the ZR2 trim, there's also a high output turbo engine that makes the same 310 horsepower, but 430 pound feet of torque. Again, that is from a gas powered four cylinder turbo engine that, that basically creates V8 like torque. That motor offers around 27 PSI of max boost pressure. All the engines use an eight speed automatic transmission, although the transmission is slightly different versus if you guys go for the base work truck or the LT all the way up to the turbo plus and the high output version. So it's a different eight speed transmission that's their design. Sadly, I don't have fuel economy figures just yet. Chevrolet uh, says that the final numbers are pending, but if you guys are looking at the fuel economy of the uh, Silverado with this powertrain, this should be around the same or slightly better. They did admit that they didn't really target Target best in class fuel economy with this powertrain. They really were targeting diesel like torque, which we'll talk about when we get this vehicle out on the road. I don't have any zero to 60 performance. I also don't have any payload configures yet, but this truck here is ready to tow a maximum of, of 7,700 pounds. So it's around 70, 700 pounds more versus the prior generation. I also don't have final curb weight figures, but they did say that this engine weighs around 80 pounds less versus the V6. I'd probably suspect this model here weighs in at around 46, 4,700 pounds when it's all said and done. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling because this is where I think Chevrolet did a pretty good job with the new Colorado. They're offering it in five different trims. This model here is the Trail Boss. So it's kind of the third trim level up. It's gonna give you a lot of the off-road goodies that you get from the top of the line ZR2, which I won't be able to show you guys a ZR2 in this video, we'll drive that at a later time. The one thing I like is the new front end. You have, of course, the corporate Chevrolet bow tie grill with this massive grill. I also like the black bow tie emblem. There's a uh, Trail Boss badge here in the actual grill. And then the headlights, this is where I want to talk about a couple of things because as you can see, this trim has halogen headlights with an incandescent turn signal. It looks really cheap and out of place, although I will say that the old Colorado didn't even offer LED headlights. If you want LED headlights, they are standard on the Z71 and the ZR2 trim. It is available as an option if you guys are looking at the LT and the LT or the LTZ trim, which is standard. It's available as an option on the LT, uh, which is definitely nice, but on the Trail Boss, you can't even get the LED headlights. So again, it looks kind of cheap. If you do get the LEDs, you'll have an LED daytime running light, LED low and high beams, but still an incandescent turn signals and LED fog lights. So you can see here on the Trail Boss, you have your own unique front fascia with this kind of black plastic in the front grille with some gray painted plastic. And then you can see here down here, this actual air dam is removable, Chevy tells us. This model here has uh, a two inch lift in terms of the suspension. Uh, and you can also get it with factory skid plates for an extra $700. That is gonna be necessary for those of you who actually plan to take this out on the trail. Now, moving around the side profile, you can see 
Unlike the prior generation, Chevy used to offer this truck in two different cab configurations and two different bed lengths. That's all gone. Instead, this was the best seller, which is the crew cab for full size doors and the slightly over five foot long bed. Its overall length is around 213 inches long. It has a wheelbase of around 131 inches long. So it has roughly a 3.1 inch stretch in the wheelbase, which is nice. It definitely gives us a stronger proportions uh, from all around. But if you're looking at the height of this truck, this is where Chevy really increased that because the old Colorado was around 70 inches tall. This truck here in this Trail Boss trim is around 79 inches tall. So they increased the height by nine inches. And that's not just in the suspension lift. The overall body is taller. It's also about two inches wider when you're looking at this model here. This is kind of the ultra wide body. It's the same thing that you get on the ZR2. Overall, this truck is around 76 inches wide. So again, it gives you more of a big Big truck stance, which I think a lot of people are going to like. In terms of the wheels, you can see my tester has an optional black 20 inch wheel, which the 20s look nice. I love the, the spokes on it. It's also got a 33 or 32 inch tall uh, Bridgestone all terrain tire. This and the Z71 have the all terrain tires, which are 32 inches. The ZR2 has a 33 inch tall tire on an 18 inch wheel. And I suspect for those of you who plan to do more off roading, you're probably going to want the 18 inch wheel. But I also can't deny how good looking these trucks, these tires are. You're riding on a 275 60 series. R20. And this model here with its two inch suspension lift has around nine and a half inches of ground clearance. We also show uh, we're driving a Z71 that has around 8.9 inches of ground clearance. The base truck has around 7.9 inches of ground clearance. So again, still a fairly good amount. The ZR2 will jack the ground clearance all the way up to 10.7 inches. So that's the one you want if you plan to do some serious off-roading. Now with the wider body on the uh, Trail Boss, you have these wider fender flares. You have a black painted accent here for the door handles or for the side mirrors. In the door handles, you can see they are just unpainted they're black uh, and then the trail boss sadly if you're looking for a sunroof that is not available it's a thousand dollar upcharge on the uh, z71 and the lt and i believe the zr2 which the prior generation colorado didn't even offer uh, a sunroof which is definitely nice now back here you can see uh, the look overall look is definitely very traditional there's not very too many surprises with this truck and then when you look at the rear of the new Colorado, you can see, I see a lot of baby Silverado in the design, especially with the taillights. You can see it's just an incandescent all around for the actual tail or for the actual brake light and for the turn signals and for the reverse lights. If you guys have the LED headlight option, you'll actually get LED accents for the taillights when the headlights are on, but all the trims are gonna have incandescence for the brake lights and for the third brake light, which is kind of a sad thing to see. The rear bumper, you can see, is also black painted on the Trail Boss, which is nice. You have integrated turn sig or integrated parking sensors and you have a camera, a full 360 camera on this trim, which is optional as part of a technology package. I also like this feature here where there's a step in the tailgate where you can kind of get into the bed a lot easier versus uh, the prior generation. And then also my tester has like a convenience package that includes this soft close tailgate, which is damped. It's very nice. The old generation, I don't even believe, offered that. But then you also have this new feature called Stow Flex, which is an industry first in this segment. Oh, the Canyon will also, the GMC Canyon will also have it. But this essentially gives you a lockable storage compartment here, which is also waterproof, um, where you can actually put stuff in here, like an umbrella, like dirty tools. It's around 45 inches wide and four inches deep. So it's a fairly good amount of storage space. And this also will lock when you have the tailgate locked. Uh, but this is just a clever solution here. I really like how Chevy's kind of innovating here, you know, giving actual truck people some useful storage options. In the bed, in the tailgate itself, you can see there's actually a ruler kind of built in for those of you who plan to use uh, this truck uh, and store your tools and use it at the job site. And then you can see my tester also has the spray and bed liner. Like I said earlier, this is a slightly longer five foot bed, which is very usable. I also like how kind of smaller the wheel wells are. So it's a very usable uh, bed. And then you can see the tailgate also, also offers a feature where you can uh, open it and clip at the half point. So again, you can kind of use this little strap here, this wire, and it'll uh, fold down at the half point. So this is really useful if you guys are using uh, a really long piece of plywood in here and it'll sit on top of the actual uh, wheel wells in the back. I don't have any payload fi uh, figures just yet. Chevy says they don't have that ready, but overall this is pretty much on par with what you're gonna get from the Frontier, from the Tacoma and the Ford Ranger in terms of the bed space. So let's go ahead and move on to the interior of the all new Chevrolet Colorado. And I actually switched over to this Z71 model because I wanna show you what the fully loaded version gets you because there's a lot of tech toys in this truck that you never have seen in the midsize uh, truck segment. Now, first of all, the seats, you can see this has the upgraded full leather seats, which are actually heated and ventilated. 
You also have an eight-way power driver's seat, four-way manual on the passenger side, but surprisingly, this truck actually has two-person memory seats. That's, those are features, again, that I've never seen in the segment, along with the cooled function. If you want the ventilated seats, you have to go for this trim, and I believe the ZR2 offers that. I'll have to check that, but remember, the Z71 and the ZR2 are the top trims in the new Colorado family. Now getting inside, you can see this model here doesn't have running boards, but it has an easier step in height versus the trail boss that I showed you the exterior on. Um, this one has roughly 8.9 inches of ground clearance, which is still a fairly good amount. When I get in and shut the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. This is, remember, built on an all new uh, frame underneath. Now here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see this is the fob that they've been using on some other Chevys. It, has in, it includes remote start, uh, from the actual fob, the usual lock, unlock, panic buttons. You can see it's a nice, fairly nice key. If you have access to the MyLink app, you should be able to access this car through your smartphone as well. Uh, start, stop button is right here where you'd expect it to be. And here you can hear it starts up pretty nicely, although I do hear a noticeable whine from the engine. We'll talk about that later on when we go into the driving seat. Now, with the eight-way power seat and you also have a manual tilt and telescoping wheel, which I want to point out, I was in the Trail Boss and the work truck. Those models actually don't have a telescoping wheel. So you get that on the higher trims. There's a fairly good amount of adjustability. I can kind of get comfortable in this truck really nicely. And I don't feel like I'm sitting on the floor like in the Toyota Tacoma. So it's got a nicer, higher seating position in terms of the rest of the materials. This is a Colorado, so I'm not going to expect really luxury interior materials, but this trim definitely has some nice upgrades. You can see the upper portion of the door panel here is hard touch plastic. Unfortunately, there is a chrome accented door handle here. You have a nice padded area here with this kind of like rubberized faux leather material with red accent stitching here. On the lower trims, this is actually just a hard touch plastic with no stitching, so kind of keep that in mind. The driver's window is express up and down. The other windows are express down, but not express up. So kind of keep that in mind as well. Uh, this is still a lower entry in Chevrolet's totem pole. Um, you also have, uh, there are also a couple of controls here that I noticed Chevy, Chevrolet took away. For example, there's no headlight controls in this vehicle, at least not a physical control. To get to that, you actually have to push that little button over here, and that will bring it up on the screen where you have an automatic setting, an off setting, a parking light setting, and then you also have auto headlights. You can also tap the car icon there, and you can find the headlight settings uh, over here as well. If you go to lights, you can adjust that there. You can also turn on and off the auto high beams. I don't like how Chevrolet got rid of the actual physical headlight controls, but it might actually solve a problem of all those idiots you see on the road that drive around with no headlights on, so that might be a good thing. If you're also trying to lock out the windows, that button is over here on the screen. There's no physical button over here. Uh, so again, Chevrolet took away some controls. I'm guessing that's for cost cutting or they were trying to simplify the interior. I'm not exactly sure. Looking at the rest of the dash, you can see the upper portion here is a hard touch plastic material. There is some actual stitching here where this is soft padded with contrasting stitching. This is the same kind of rubberized material you get on the doors. It all looks pretty nice and it's relatively high quality for the segment. What is really impressive, however, is the tech because every trim, including the base trim levels, have an eight inch center display here or instrument panel for in front of the driver, which is also slightly customizable. You can kind of push this button here on the steering wheel and cycle between different menus. You can also push and hold this button and you can actually change out the gauge display. So if I push and hold it, it gives you three different gauge faces. You can see going to gauge two, it kind of gives you a more industrial truckish look. And then gauge three is kind of a simplified uh, look for the tachometer. So that's all fairly nice. The 11 inch, the 11.3 inch screen here is also standard. That's right, an 11.3 inch center display is standard even on the base work truck. So that's the largest display in the industry. Currently, the largest before this was the Frontier at nine inches. You can see this is their new Android operating system. It's got Google software. As you guys saw earlier, it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It has over the air updates. It's really a beautiful looking display, crystal clear graphics. It's also very snappy and easy to use. Uh, and when you go back to the home display here, there's the map interface. You can see it's Google Maps basically from your computer. So this all looks really nice and it's very impressive that it all comes standard even on the base trim. Now you can see here, this trim also has dual zone climate automatic temperature control. You cannot get that on the Trail Boss and you also have heated and ventilated seats. Again, segment first in this uh, segment. And my tester also has a heated steering wheel along with buttons on the wheel for the adaptive cruise control. That's right, this truck is now available with adaptive cruise control and a power sunroof. It's a $1,000 upcharge on the LT, the LTZ and the ZR2 trim. Uh, they don't offer a panel roof, but again, it's nice that they're offering you those upgraded features. Uh, down here, you can see a few more controls where you can basically open all the windows from one button over here, which is nice. Uh, you have your auto start, stop, defeat. You have active lane keep assist here. 
and then your dash fence and you have wireless phone charging pad there uh, and you have two USB charging ports. And then you're, you can see over here, this is the dial that controls your drive mode selectors. So you can see there's five different modes. There's a tow haul, a terrain mode, a normal mode, an off-road mode, uh, and then um, no sport mode, but you can see, I love the graphics uh, back there. It actually looks really great. And then you also have your four wheel drive controller here where you can go to four high, four low, a two high mode, and then an automatic mode. So again, really simplified. Uh, this controls the eight speed automatic. You can see very traditional shifter. If I put the truck into reverse there, you can see this one also has the 360 surround view camera where you can also go to a curb view and go around the truck. So this is all very nice. It's part of a technology package that this model has, which you can actually get on the base work truck. I was driving a base work truck for a thousand dollars extra. You can add the full uh, 360 camera, which is definitely a nice feature to have. Cup holders over here, you have piano black plastic trim, and then there's a padded armrest here, which if you go for the base trims, it's actually not stitched. It's not quite as comfortable. You can see there's a little bit of storage here, a relatively deep storage cubby in there with a power outlet and whatnot. So overall, uh, the area here in the front seat is really nice. The glove compartment I do notice, however, is uh, not damped or lined with felt. It kind of just cheaply falls. It's a bin style uh, glove box, so it offers a good amount of storage. And then you can see here there's incandescent lighting for the map lights, which is surprising uh, to see in a 2023 model year. Uh, and then this model here also has the Bose stereo system, which sounds pretty good. It is pretty much on par with what you'll find in some of the other competing systems. But again, there's a lot of tech features in this truck that really raises the bar. So I'm impressed to find it, especially in this trim. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat of this truck because Chevrolet stretched the wheelbase by three inches on this new generation. However, legroom back here went down by an inch. Not sure how that happened, but you have 34.7 inches of legroom back here, which is definitely small. Um, this is the only configuration that you can get. If you want, you can also fold this seat up. There's a lever here that you can pull up. You can see there's a little bit of under storage here. You can find the jack. Remember, this vehicle does have a full-size matching spare tire. But let me go ahead and back get back here. First of all, no grab handle here, but there is one here. I mean, most people are probably just going to use the seat, kind of hoist themselves in. I'm five foot seven. You can see as I get back here, shut the door. There's hard touch plastic materials back here. It is padded over here where my elbows are dressed, which is nice, but you can see not quite as nice material as the front, but this is still relatively decent. You can see I have decent head space. Legroom back here is fine. This is where I'd have the car, uh, the seat to drive. And then you can see there's cup holders back here. There's two USB charging ports along with rear seat air vents. It looks like there could be a button here for uh, actual heated seats, but it's not available. And then down here you can see there's an actual uh, household power outlet, which is nice. You have two storage cubbies. And then if you fold this down, you can see there's an armrest here with two cup holders. And then like every other truck, you can also slide open this rear window manually, which is nice. But overall, if you guys are looking for the biggest back seat, you might want to check out competitors like the Gladiator and the Honda Ridgeline. So here we are finally in the 2023 Colorado. Um, now we are starting off our driving portion in a Z71. Uh, later on, I'm going to try to snag a work truck trim with the base engine. We're going to see what we can get uh, just in terms of zero to 60. We're also going to switch into a trail boss and drive that vehicle off-roading. But for now, we're starting off the drive in this trim here. It's got the plus engine. So uh, we have 310 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque. And let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. It's in four-wheel drive auto right now and in a normal drive mode. All right, we got 7.17 seconds there, and we actually did a run earlier uh, off camera and we got 7.04 seconds. So 7.1, like the low seven second range is a pretty respectable time. Uh, this engine, however, has so much torque. I mean, 390 pound feet of torque, 310 horsepower. It really makes this truck feel a lot more like a diesel. It's very diesel-like in its power delivery. Uh, and Chevrolet says that they tune this engine to basically be more truck-like. So they got some feedback in the Silverado uh, when they first put this engine in there and, they, and customers were complaining saying it didn't sound truck-like enough. So they tuned the acoustics to make it sound a little more truck-like. And I have to say, the engine sounds okay for a four-cylinder, but for those of you who are coming from you know, the V6, you might actually prefer the six-cylinder as opposed to this. But you know what, there's nobody behind me. I'm gonna do one more run here and see what we can get. It doesn't really launch very hard, but, but man, once you get into the meat of the power band, this thing just pulls 7.3, which is fine. Uh, but I have to say for a big displacement four cylinder, it actually is relatively smooth. Um, it's not super like thrashy sounding and it doesn't vibrate or send that many vibrations to the pedals or the steering wheel. 
and just that low end torque. So if, for those of you who, for example, had the diesel powertrain in this vehicle, you're gonna really love this Turbo 4 because of all that torque. Now also keep in mind, there is also a high output version of this engine that makes another 40 more pound feet of torque. Sadly, I won't be able to drive it on this drive. Chevy says that we'll be able to drive the ZR2 at a later date and that's the car, that's the truck that has the standard high output tune. For $395, however, you can go to the dealer and they can flash the powertrain to give you the high output figures, which again, also bumps the boost displacement from 20 PSI to 27 max boost. So that again, that's kind of a, a steal for 400 bucks. So I highly recommend that for those of you uh, who want the most power out of this powertrain. But this is an all new chassis. The frame is all new. Chevy says that they had to move or do a new frame for the new engine to accommodate it. And it definitely rides like a truck. Uh, this LTZ that we're on, we're driving and also has the 20 inch wheels. We're gonna switch to a Trail Boss later that has 18s and it should improve the ride quality. Visibility is good. The seats are also pretty comfortable actually. Vehicles in this segment don't typically have good seats. What really impresses me though, I'm sitting here with heated and cooled seats, which is nice. I also have a heated steering wheel. The all digital display looks nice. There's a lot of tech in this truck that was just kind of not available in this segment. Now, granted, this segment is pretty low. The bar is pretty low. The Frontier is the newest truck for now, which I actually really like the Frontier, but it's V6 engine, you know, you had to rev, you have to rev it out to get the most power out of it. And I think this is probably the characteristics that most truck buyers are gonna like. The eight-speed auto is also pretty smooth. It's got a different transmission, of course, in this power, in this engine. So if you guys are thinking you can just flash tune the base engine to get you this power levels, Chevy says don't do it because it's got hardware changes and the transmission won't survive uh, from the base engine if you start you know, pushing that to have more power like this powertrain. But overall, uh, it's a nice driving truck out on the road. I think it actually rides pretty well. It rides like a truck, but more on the comfortable side. The seats are comfortable. Visibility is also good. Uh, you will finally have features like a driver assistance tech, like adaptive cruise control, which you couldn't even get before on the Colorado, which is nice. But let's actually switch over to the base truck and then switch over to the off-road location and see uh, what the other trims are capable of. So I managed to snag myself a work truck trim, and this has the lower output version of the 2.7 liter turbo four cylinder. Remember this makes 237 horsepower. Let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. Definitely feels a lot more sluggish. All right, I got 8.4 seconds here and this is with it more going slightly downhill. So uh, I'll have to wait until I can get one of these to retest at some point back home, but 8.4 is still a respectable time. I never got a chance to zero to 60 test the old 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, but I did drive one of those. It was a freaking dog. This definitely feels better. I mean, it has 260 basically pound feet of torque, 237 horsepower. It is a respectable amount of power. And to be honest, for those of you who are in the market for this type of vehicle, especially in this price range, because remember this truck that I'm driving is $37,000 as equipped. It has about $3,300 worth of options on it. It is a relatively reasonable amount of money considering all the tech that it has. Although I will say on the outside, it looks more like a $20,000 truck, but you kind of have to keep in mind everything in this segment's gotten more expensive. The base price of this vehicle uh, is around 32 grand uh, with the four wheel drive. If you, get, if you get it with two wheel drive, it'll be uh, just a hair over $30,000. But overall, in terms of the drive, it feels very similar to its more higher trimmed uh, cousins but you are gonna definitely notice that redu reduction in horsepower and torque. Uh, so for, for those of you who are wondering, is it worth the extra $1,200 to go uh, with the higher output four cylinder? I would definitely say yes, but if you're on a budget and you're just looking for a, you know, the cheapest way possible to get you know, your employees into a work truck, you obviously don't need to have the extra power, uh, but it is definitely nice to have. And I like how Chevy offers it to you for not that much more money uh, considering you know the competition and uh, how more how much more expensive the old V6 was. All right, so here we are in an all new trim level for the Colorado, the Trail Boss trim. And we first were introduced to this trim level in the Silverado a couple of years ago. And what Chevy has essentially done here is they've given us some of the off-road capability that we get in the ZR2, which is far more expensive, a $10,000 more expensive truck versus the Trail Boss. So compared to a standard LT, we have a two inch suspension lift. We have the wider, three inch wider body or track. Um, and this vehicle is also about an inch taller versus 
the Z71 that we drove earlier. But in total, we have about nine and a half inches of ground clearance, which is a good amount. And if you want more, the ZR2 is what's gonna give you 10.7 inches of ground clearance. That has a three inch suspension lift, but sadly we are not driving the ZR2 this time. Chevy says there'll be another event for that vehicle. Now this truck does come with several drive modes, a total of five, and you access it by switching this little knob here. You can see there's an off-road mode, there's a tow haul, a terrain mode, normal, uh, and for the majority of this, we're gonna leave it in the off-road setting. It's primarily software changes, but the terrain mode actually kind of gives you a form of one pedal drive where it gives you some extra low speed braking. You also have this kind of off-road page here that shows you all this useful information uh, along with that in the instrument panel, which is definitely nice to have when you're off-roading. But uh, this trail that Chevy has us driving on is definitely a, a good trail for the Colorado. It really shows how <laughs> well the suspension works in this truck. My, uh, my poor editor is out there <laughs> trying to get some footage. Hopefully he doesn't bang his head. But uh, <laughs> what I like about the Colorado though is the small size because uh, on the road, this truck gives you kind of baby Silverado vibes and you get the same thing out here on the off-road trails where the truck is not so incredibly wide where you might you worry about fitting through some of these tighter trails. The 32 inch all-terrain tires that this comes with along with the Z71 provide some good traction. Uh, if you guys want a fatter, bigger tire, there's the 33 inch available on the ZR2. But really for me, what, what feels good about the Colorado is just how comfortable it is out here. The suspension has been upgraded in this model. Now it doesn't soak up bumps as well as like, let's say a car based vehicle coming out here with an independent suspension, but there's really a lot of opportunities out here where we were able to notice the wheel articulation that you get with the live axle in the back and it really just gives you a lot of confidence out here. You don't have to worry about dragging the belly of this truck too much because it's a smaller vehicle versus these bigger full-size trucks. The one thing I noticed, however, is even the Trail Boss in the Z71, there's a skid plate package that you can add for $700 extra. It's a no-brainer for me. I'm not entirely sure if this truck comes with skid plates standard if you don't check that option, but uh, during this whole course, we actually haven't had a chance. We haven't scraped the underside at all and there were some, definitely some gnarlier uh, parts of this trail where there was plenty of flex and articulation and the truck just kind of feels solid going over it. So it makes terrain like this kind of easy peasy, almost too easy. I want Chevy to actually challenge us a little more on some of these courses. All right, so for the last part of this off-road course, we're kind of going through this rather steep or going down this steep hill where there's a lot of trenches and this is gonna give us an opportunity to really test out the wheel articulation. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm like not paying attention. <laughs> oh. Want to retake on that one? <laughs> Let's do a retake. All right, so for the last part of this uh, off-road course, we're going down this rather steep hill and there's a lot of trenches in the hill, so it's gonna give us an opportunity to really test out the wheel articulation and the suspension. Uh, and remember, we're back in the trail boss trim, so yeah, so uh, my editor out there is getting some, wow, there's definitely a lot of wheel articulation and <laughs> this is where we can really use the nine and a half inches of ground clearance that this truck gives you. And uh, it kind of just made, made it through that really easily. There was a time where I wasn't paying attention. I accidentally scraped the undercarriage a little bit, but uh, the truck just kind of makes it super easy to get through, uh, get through that trail. Did I accidentally scrape? <laughs> you, you stopped in the nick of time. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't paying attention because I was like I, thinking I about know, what I was going to say. But we're all good. We're all good. This, it's a truck. It's got almost 10 inches of ground clearance. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with uh, how this thing does. What I love about the Trail, the, uh, trail Boss is the smaller size of this vehicle because I love the Silverado Trail Boss, but this we just kind of makes it even easier. So even though the mid-size truck segment doesn't necessarily sell in the crazy numbers like the full-size segment, uh, this space has continuously gotten better over time. The Tacoma has always been the best seller with Toyota doing around 215,000 last year. The Chevrolet Colorado has always been number two. Chevy did almost 90,000 units in the US last year in 2022, making this a very important model, model for Chevrolet. So after spending some time driving the all new third generation Colorado, we spent some time in the work truck in the LT, the uh, Trail Boss and the LTZ, the fully loaded version. I'm pretty impressed with what Chevy is offering here. They really are raising the bar, especially when you're looking at the interior tech. The 11.3 inch display with the Google software is one of the best in this segment. 
The interior, while it doesn't have the most interior space in the segment, has pretty good quality materials, comfortable seats, and a really easy to use interior in terms of the layout. Uh, in terms of the engine, the 2.7 liter turbo delivers solid performance, much better versus what you get in the naturally aspirated V6 and the current Tacoma. But keep in mind, again, the segment is about to heat up because Toyota is working on an all new Tacoma. The Frontier is all new and it's still a really strong entry. And then at some point, Ford is also going to reveal the new Ranger, which that should also be a really strong competitor as well. This truck, however, I think is a really well-rounded vehicle. It's sister vehicle as well. The GMC Canyon should also be around the same boat, which we will be driving the Canyon sometime at the end of April. So you have to wait a little bit to get your hands or to see that vehicle. Uh, now, if you are looking to get your hands on the new Colorado, Chevy says that production has already started and these should start arriving at the you, your local dealership probably by the end of this month. They are leaving the factory and waiting to be shipped out to dealers and pricing for the new Colorado is surprisingly close to the prior generation. Now, prior the prior generation offered a regular cab and an extended cab, which started around 26 grand. The new Colorado starts at around 29 grand for the base version, but remember that's for the crew cab configuration, which is now standard. That's actually around the same price as the previous generation. However, the price is only gonna go up from there. Uh, this model here, the Z71, is gonna start at around $39,900. The Trail Boss earlier starts at around $38,000. I would highly recommend going for at least the Z71 if you want a higher trim. This model here, with all the options that it has, balloons the price to around $48,000. I know 48 grand is a lot, but also keep in mind, if you guys are looking at a Tacoma TRD Pro, those can also be in the low $50,000 range. The ZR2, which we should be driving later this year, is going to be the most expensive trim. I've seen those go a little over the $50,000 mark, but you can already build those on Chevrolet's uh, consumer site. So overall, even though this truck is more expensive, which again, at the higher end, you could essentially get a full-size truck. If you don't necessarily want the size nor need the capability, this is certainly going to be a good option. I think Chevy has really knocked it out of the park with the new Colorado. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 Chevrolet Colorado. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.